Procedural content generation for Unreal Engine is a major asset introduced from version 5.2 onwards. It allows designers to quickly build complex assets, including both landscapes and buildings, from basic geometries, such as surfaces, blinds and meshes, which I'll be covering over the next few videos. In this video, I'll be showing you the basics of procedural generation, using vegetation on surfaces to understand how to control these scripts. I've loaded a scene with some cesium Google Photorealistic tiles and cropped out a plot. I've done a previous video on this, so you can take a look at that for more details. And I've generated a simple landscape to cover this hole by going up to Selection Mode, Landscape, and in the Manage tab, select New, and you can configure the size of the landscape here. Once created, you can add extra tiles or sculpt the land using the brush. It is quite fun and intuitive to use, and all the options here work as described, so you can flatten areas to place buildings and so on. I will delete this as I've already created one, so we can focus on the PCG. I will first create a forest across this terrain. So you can enable the plugin from Edit and Plugins. Search PCG, make sure this is checked, and then restart. I already have this installed, so I'll skip the restart. If you select this green cross and open up the Place Actors panel, search PCG, and there will be this volume, which you can drag into your scene, and it controls which zone you can generate within. Let's make this larger by scaling it, and just make sure it intersects with the landscape, something like 100 by 100 by 50. I'll press the F key, to zoom into this volume. And so now the forest will only be generated within this area. I'll also close this Actors panel as I don't need it anymore. In the Details panel on the right, if you scroll down, you can also see a slot. This is where the PCG graph will be dropped in. So let's make one now. I'll create a new folder called PCG. Right click. Go down and find PCG, and let's name this Forest. You can then drag this into the graph slot in the volume. Double click to open it up, and we have a PCG canvas, which works similarly to blueprints. Most of your PCG graphs will have a similar process of sampling a shape to populate with points and then applying geometry. In this case, we will be applying points to our landscape. To demonstrate this, right click and search Surface Sampler. Then connect the landscape surface. In the default input node, if you expand this, you can connect the landscape from here, which automatically detects from our scene. Click the sampler and check debug in order to see where we are sampling the points. The first time, you may have to press the Generate button over here in the Volume Details. And now, if you move it around the landscape, it will follow the form while maintaining the set spacing. You will also notice that these cubes have different colours to represent densities, which is great for fine-tuning how much geometry you want later on. The spacing will be adjusted in the Surface Sampler. In the Sampler settings, starting with the points extents. Reducing this will make the size of the points smaller and dense. You can control the points per square meter, decreasing like so, and you see the live result with the debug on. This is a very dense forest, so let's reset it back to the default. And let's increase the points extents, so they're easier to manage. The points have spacing between each other, which you can change with the Lucen. So higher values reduce the amount of points, although I will show you a better way of controlling the variation using other nodes later on. If you check Unbounded, the generation will ignore the volume and distribute across the entire landscape. And then the seed is also useful for randomization if you want a different forest every time you load up. Before we add the geometry, we will want to add some variation to the points in relation to size and rotation, especially when used for vegetation to make it look more realistic. This can be done with the Transform Points node. 
to connect it to the sound block. And you can control the range for the offsets, rotation and scale. Let's start with the rotation. We want the trees to be randomly rotated on the z-axis. So between 0 and 360 degrees. So let's change the max rotation to 360 and minimum to 0. To see the effects, turn on the debug for the transform points and off for the surface sampler. For the scale, we can change the uniform scale between 0 0.5 and 1. So the minimum will be 0 0.5 for all the axes. And it's looking good over here. And so you can see why having this debug on is very useful for seeing what you're doing. But though we have varied the rotations and scales, the points are still very orderly. We can remove certain points to create a more organic feel, and we can do this by adding attribute noise. You can see here we have the min and max noise. These work in correlation to the color scale from black to white, which you can see here on the boxes. To see this better, once again, I'll turn off the debug for the transform and activate it for the noise. As I increase the noise, you will see that more of the boxes become white. This is when controlling the max end of it. This is useful because we can remove just the blacks and greys, for example, if we only want a minor reduction. And then we can increase the blacks by doing the opposite and adjusting the minimum amount of noise. To then color some of these points, we need the density filter, which works by setting the bounds of the colors or the zeros to ones. Once again, let's turn on the debug and off for the attribute noise. With a higher lower bound, it has removed all the blacks and greys. And if we wanted only the black boxes, we could do this the other way by bringing the lower bounds to zero and the upper bounds to a much lower value. As we increase the upper bound, more greys will start appearing and then some whites. But you get the idea how much you control you have based on zero being black and one being white. Let's say we are happy with this distribution, maybe too small for a forest, but good enough for our example. Let's add some geometries. Search for static mesh spawner by dragging out from the density filter pin and under the mesh entries in the side panel, hit this plus button, add an array, and from the description section, you can see the static mesh slot. Simply add any mesh geometry you like. I'll be adding some trees from the marketplace. The mega scash trees are great for this. So here are a couple which I found under the Norway maple folder and they have some nice varieties. You can find these by searching mega scans in the marketplace. I'm using the Norwegian ones as the pack is slightly smaller size compared to the European packs. With that you can drag and drop in the meshes. Let's give it some time to compile the shaders. And there you have it. And that's the basics. You can then add more rays and different static mesh trees. Let's add one more. When we zoom in, it becomes apparent that our trees are not growing upwards. So to fix this, we can go back to transform points and check absolute rotation. Much better. We can now turn off all the debugs as we don't need these boxes. The tree types will be randomly but evenly distributed unless you set the weight. You need to scroll down to the bottom or make this larger. And if I change the weight of this tree to 2, you'll see that becomes more common. As I move this value of higher, more of these tree types will be distributed. Let's keep that too. Let's make this forest a bit more varied by adding another array. Set the weight now to 3, so it is more common type. And I'll pick a smaller tree type down here. 
At this point, you can tweak the weights and go back to the density of the sampler to perfect your art. Before I end here, you might notice that the trees seem to be moving quite strangely. The wind is moving the trees up and down instead of side to side. It is a small bug which can be easily fixed with the materials. In the content browser, search for MF symbol and open this up. Go across to find the main rotator comment and double click the object pivot point to open it up. Select the transform positions and make sure that the source is instance and particle space and the destination is absolute world space. And do this for both the nodes and hit apply. Just wait for this to compile. And now you can see the trees are moving as they should be. I have a first person controller in my scene. So I'll press play and take a closer look. Having a wander around, it is looking great, except the tree bases are slightly floating above the ground. This can be quickly fixed. So let's go back to the graph, to the transform points and change the offset in the Z direction. Let's try 10 and regenerate. Actually, we need to make that a negative to make it move down rather than up. And now it is fixed. Now we can walk around again and see how this is a very powerful and quick tool. Once you understand how to fine tune and control the point generation, you can apply these techniques to many different situations and geometries. Once you start moving into architectural procedure generation, the power of these techniques become more evident. In the next video, I'll go through using splines to create some architectural elements. So I will see you there.